In this lesson, we'll look at front and high and low pressure systems. First, we'll look at weather and cloud types in low pressure systems. And then we'll look at weather in high pressure systems, which differ in winter and summer. You may remember this picture, in which I explain how the air flows around a high and a low pressure system in the northern hemisphere. We'll first look at the air flow in a low pressure system. So in the northern hemisphere, the air flow around a low pressure system is counterclockwise. Now if you look at the arrows, you can see that on the left, the air came from the north, so it will be cold. On the bottom of this picture, the air came from the south, so it will be warm. And top right, this air came from the same latitude, so it will be cool air. Now there are two boundaries between these three uh, regions of air. First of all, between the cold and the warm air, this is called a cold front. And on the weather map, a cold front is indicated by a line with blue triangles. And the triangles point in the direction in which the cold front moves. Then there's a boundary between cool and warm air. And this is called a warm front. And a warm front on the weather map is indicated by a red line with red semicircles. Now let's look at what clouds form at a warm front and a cold front and how that affects weather. And I'll show that using an animation. In the previous lesson, I explained how clouds form due to frontal uplift. I'll show you the animation again. You'll have warm air separated by the cool air, and that's what you call a warm front. Now the warm air will come in and be pushed up because it's lighter. And then these clouds will form. I'll stop the animation. You'll have cirrus uh, first at high altitudes, then altostratus, then stratus, and then nimbostratus, and finally cumulus. Um, now this front is not stationary. In reality, it moves from left to right. So imagine that you live there on the right in this little house. You'll first see the cirrus passing by, then the altostratus, then the stratus, then the nimbostratus, and finally the cumulus. So if you see the cirrus or altostratus clouds appearing, then you know that uh, within, let's say, 12 or 24 hours, um, the stratus and, and finally the nimbostratus will appear. So this is a way to predict weather. I'll continue the animation. So you see, first is cirrus, altostratus, stratus, and nimbostratus, and then the cumulus. Now after the warm front, the cold front will follow. And a cold front is characterized by a steeper boundary. So the boundary between the warm air and the cold air is way steeper. So what you'll have is that the warm air will rise very fast, and a cumulonimbus cloud is formed with rain and thunder. In a low pressure system first you'll have the warm front and then the cold front, but the cold front tends to move faster than the warm front, so it catches up with the warm front. And what you get is something which is called an occluded front. Now a cold front tends to move faster than the warm front, so at a certain point the cold front will overtake the warm front and it will push up the warm air between them. And as a result, the nimbostratus, which is characteristic for the warm front, and the cumulonimbus, which is characteristic for the cold front, they kind of mix, as you can see in this picture. So you'll first get the rain, the, the lots of rain from the nimbostratus clouds, and then almost immediately this will uh, go into the heavy rain, hail, thunder from the cumulonimbus clouds. This is what it looks like on a weather map. You can still see the warm in the cold front, but near the center of the low, you can see the occluded front. It's called an occluded front because the warm air is shielded from the low. So it's occluded from the low. Now in high pressure systems or in anticyclones, the weather is different. Remember that a high pressure system is characterized by descending air. Now before we had air that went up, so it uh, went up, the pressure went down, and the temperature went down, and you got condensation. With descending air, you get the opposite. You get pressure and temperature that increases, and as a result, any water droplets that are in the air will evaporate, so you'll get a clear sky. And this is a satellite image of such a high pressure system uh, near the south of Australia, and you can see clearly that there's a clear sky in the center of the high pressure system. This is a large system, its diameter is about a thousand kilometers. Now you can also have a temperature inversion at a high pressure system. Normally, the higher you get, the lower the temperature. 
but at a temperature inversion, you get a layer of warm air above a layer of cold air. This layer of warm air is created because of the descending air, and it traps a layer of cold air below. This layer of warm air acts as a cap. It stops convection, and it will trap clouds and air pollution, as you can see in this picture here. Now, it stops convection because normally you'd have a parcel of uh, air which is warmed, it will rise, uh, but at some point it will encounter a warmer layer of air. So this parcel of air will have a temperature that's lower than the air above and it will stop to convect. Another effect is uh, in winter anticyclones. Um, on a cloudless day, you will have radiation cooling during the night because there are no clouds. And the next day, because it's winter, there's a little sunlight, there's little evaporation, so no clouds will form during this next day. And this process will repeat itself because the next night there's another uh, stretch of radiation cooling um, and the day after that uh, it's even colder so uh, it's less probable that clouds will form. And you, it will become progressively colder and this might last a long time so this is very uh, persistent. But if air with high relative humidity comes in uh, then a lot of fog will uh, form because uh, the land is very cold and this high relative humidity air will uh, start to condense into fog. And you can also have uh, clouds forming uh, due to the high relative humidity air and these clouds will be trapped. So a summary. We've looked at low pressure systems which have a warm and a cold front. At a warm front you'll first see cirrus clouds then the stratus, then the nimostratus with lots of rain, and then warm air. Then the cold front follows with cumulonimbus clouds with heavy rain, hail, and thunder. And an occluded front can occur when the cold front uh, has catched up with the warm front, the warm air is lifted off the ground, and here the nimbostratus and cumulonimbus clouds will follow up on each other very shortly. And in high pressure systems, there is fair weather, but there is an inversion possible with dreary weather situations. Thank you for watching. In the next lesson, we'll look into uh, what happens in the formation of clouds. And I explained that, uh, for instance, there might be a cap on, uh, on the atmosphere, uh, limiting cloud formation. Or you'll have cumulonimbus, where there's uh, lots of convection, so you get very severe weather conditions. Uh, how does that form? And uh, we'll look into a way uh, to predict situations like that. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.